Hello everybody, my name is Cool Blue, and I'm bringing you all this video of Cool Blue and Cardboard. This will be uh, video number one of a series of three for this game in front of us called Final Girl. Uh, the reason why I'm bringing this into three different videos is because I want to do a review slash commentary of the game, and then uh, video number two will be me setting up the game, and then video number three will be me playing the game. Uh, so unless you want a two-hour video, I decided to break it up in pieces uh, because I'm assuming nobody wants a two-hour video of Final Girl. <laughs> But if you think differently, then please let me know in the comments, please. Um, <clears throat> but this game we have in front of us is a Final Girl, which is a solo only game. Uh, so that means there's only one player. And it is a game that essentially, that essentially uh, is based on the Hostage Negotiator series um, by uh, Van Ryder Games. And the, if you don't know the Hostage Negotiator series, which I, I know about, but I've never actually played, um, basically it follows this the uh, certain number of rules and does some stuff. So it has some cool mechanics, let's just say that. And the bones are pretty strong. Uh, and they've been imported into this game. So this game itself is a uh, dice rolling, pick up and deliver, hand management slash modular game. So it has all those things going on. The modularity is a part, one of the, the pros of this game for me, because you can mix and match the different pieces. <clears throat> but on the same token, um, <clears throat> excuse me, on the same token, that requires you to have multiple different pieces. So kind of LCG adjacent, and I'm very LCG averse or living card game averse to where you have the different pieces come out in different episodes and seasons, but you know, it's fine. I've already invested, so it's too late. Uh, so as far as the game goes, the game actually follows you, the main character, who plays a final girl, and final girl, for those who don't know, is, oh, sorry, final girl as a concept, who, for those who don't know, is a movie trope to where in horror movies, usually in horror movies, there's uh, the killers doing the killers things and, you know, murdering people and doing all the bad stuff, and the final girl is the last girl alive who's going in and, you know, she has to overcome insurmountable odds to defeat the villain, and she ends up winning and, you know, saving the day or, rest, or you know, making out alive. Uh, this game takes that concept and it does a lot of really cool things with it, especially considering that, you know, you have killers that you that you can uh, kind of port over and play around with. You have different final girls with different powers and it does a pretty good job with all that. Uh, it's very thematic on the movie horror trope. Uh, so I'm not necessarily a fan of movie or horror movies. Uh, me and horror movies are not the best of friends because I get nightmares if I watch movies, especially as close to bedtime or in the dark. So I'm definitely a scary person, uh, as in. I get scared pretty easily when it comes to that kind of stuff. But that said, playing this game was fun because I got to live out those movie tropes and kind of play in some of those movie scenarios. Uh, it's definitely not scary. So atmosphere as, as a concept is not really a thing. It's more like, you, you know, you have times where you feel par like things are perilous or you feel hopeless. And that sometimes comes up, but that's more of a result of dice existing in this game and sometimes randomness just happening. And you're just like, all right, well, I guess I'm going to die now, literally. Or, sorry, figuratively in the game, I should say. So um, it does use that Final Girl trope pretty well, um, where you're kind of that last that last person, you're trying to go through and survive and trying to deal with the killer. And uh, yeah, there's, there's a whole bunch of um, whole bunch of different pieces to talk about. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just show you all this side here. So this is, um, if you want to play the game, you need the core box, which is this here. And then you also need at least one feature film. So you need a core box and at least one feature film. This one here is the uh, Inkanyama one for Sacred Groves. And uh, there are five such ones that exist currently at the time of this recording. There's five more that are coming out. Actually, it's five plus one, plus one and a half one, but we'll talk about that later. Uh, there's uh, five more that are coming out soon on uh, a Kickstarter. Uh, the Kickstarter was fully funded uh, back in uh, February, I think. And uh, that Kickstarter is going to be five more Final Girl things. So it's doing, it's doing pretty well for itself. And it's, um, I like seeing that. It's pretty good. Um, and of the other feature films we have, we have these ones here, and as you can see, there's different uh, killers here, and there's different locations, and there's a name of them. So you have Hans, who's basically Jason. So if you uh, know your horror movie stuff, that's effectively Jason. You have Geppetto, which I don't know what the equivalent of Geppetto is, um, but is Geppetto as a villain is a character who has our main character who has a um, uh, who has three little puppets that go around and do and do Geppetto's bidding, and um, you know. As a gameplay mechanic, you can either focus on trying to kill the puppets, which they can die in one hit, or you can try to focus on trying to kill uh, Geppetto or fight Geppetto. But pretty much any damage you do to the puppets, you're not doing to Geppetto, so you gotta kind of balance, okay, I need to manage these puppets because I'm starting to, they're starting to cause a lot of issues. And then you also gotta deal with Geppetto, and it's, it's, it's like it gives you some cool decisions. Um, Dr. Fright is basically Freddy Krueger. Uh, not much to say about that. You know, he attacks you in your dreams. Or sorry, uh, you can only fight him while you're sleeping, but otherwise he's attacking everybody else while you're awake and he can't attack you. Poultrygeist is a ghost, and that one, 
you you don't actually you do not actually fight the ghosts themselves. You instead fight, um, or so you instead have to find certain items and get out uh, with those items in in your hand. So it's kind of like a capture the flag type situation, which I appreciate the change up in pace on that one. And then Inkanyaba is uh, the the Avenger, and uh, Inkanyaba is basically trying to protect. Uh, his sacred lands and he's killing people who are desecrating his sacred lands and uh, there's some cool synergies that come out from the location plus in Kenyaba. So that's just a generic um, generic overview of all the different villains that we have or all the different uh, killers that we have. Um, as far as the locations, there's five different locations here and those five locations Excuse me. Those five locations, they have uh, different things. And um, the cool thing about this game is that, you know, you have your final girls, which uh, each one of these boxes comes with two final girls. And uh, you can kind of mix and match your whole thing. So you can, I can take the final girl that I get from Camp Happy Trails and play play with that final girl in Creech Manor. Um, I can take the killer. I can take Hans that's in Camp Happy Trails and take him over to Sacred Groves and fight him there. Or I can take Inkanyama from here and fight him in Carnival of Blood. So you can mix and match a lot of things. So that's pretty fun. That's one of the module. That's one of the, like I said, the pros of this game is like you get the modularity. Um, but going to locations, the locations are basically another character you're fighting um, or dealing with. The locations are where you're moving around on the map. They have different map layouts. So I'll show you. Uh, this should be Camp Happy Trails, and this is the Camp Happy Trails map, which we can see right there. Um, so essentially, there's like different locations to where people can be, and uh, there's certain walking paths that you can walk through, and you know the killers over here doing killer things and you're over there doing your not killer things there's locations that you can search for stuff and each map layout is basically uh, quite different so look at maple lane uh, which has a nice cool mechanic toward maple lane uh, in maple lane uh, you actually have uh, houses that you can go into in order to get into the houses you have to knock on the door and convince people to open it up also the box design i forgot to mention that um, these actually come completely off so you can have your board right there uh, but these are also the lids and they're double-sided so here you have maple lane and all of this stuff here so all the stuff associated with maple lane and the cards that you need and on this side you have dr fright's stuff so this is the killer's board and the killer's board is right there you have your killer track and tells you their stuff and it, you keep all the killer's cards here it shows a nice little picture of dr fright being uh, the dream doctor and uh, yeah so uh, that said, each location is different, and it gives you a whole bunch of different uh, things. Also, this is uh, one of the final girls for Maple Lane. This is another one. Um, also, as a side note, I do want to take a moment to praise this art, specifically this picture, exactly this picture. The rest of the art in the game is cool. I like it. It's readable. It's, it's fine. But this art, for some reason, grabs me, and I don't know what it is about this particular art or artist's style or whoever did this art, which um, I should probably know the name. Um, but I just love the look of this, like like just just like the the way the hair is and like like the the kind of the hashing on the side, like it just looks really cool. And yeah, I understand that this character is kind of in the same art, but this one looks way cooler. Like I love the yellow, the yellow tinges. I don't know something about that. Anyway, enough of me randomly gushing about art. Um, but each location is different, and it gives you a lot of variety. And that's a fun thing because you can play like playing Hans on Camp Happy Trails feels one way, but then if you take Hans to Creech Manor, it feels completely different. Like, it just feels way different. Like, it's just like, oh my gosh, it's like Creech Manor's doing things that you got to deal with. And Hans is out there hulking around, being Jason and just showing up and doing weird things. Uh, so there's a lot of uh, variability, there's a lot of modularity. And um, as far as the uh, core box, which is needed to play the game, uh, it comes with components too. So here we got the rule book. We got the player board that you need to actually keep track of uh, your stuff. And... These are uh, some of the rule sheets that come with each individual box. I put them all in the same box. And in here you get your dice, because this is a dice rolling game I mentioned before. So you got your dice that you're dealing with. Let me get this off here. Got your dice that you're dealing with. You got some meeples. Uh, each box comes with its own individual, um, individual uh, special items. So I put all the special items for each character in this box because they all fit. So I want to keep those here to the side. And uh, then you get some, uh, you know, some little pieces that you keep track of health. Some victims. This is the final girl, which is a little piece, a uh, little uh, pink token. This is the killer, which is a little red token. And uh, the victims are little yellow ones, or special victims are these ones over here that are orange, white, or blue. That's just to denote special victims when the game calls for them. And uh, you have these little health tokens here that uh, are, sorry, these little other tokens here for overflow. And then you have health tokens here, which these health tokens are pretty cool because uh, when you're playing the game, this is part of your health. And if you were to take fatal damage, then instead of dying immediately, first you flip this over, you flip this over. If it's showing hearts like that, then that means that you actually heal back up 
uh, those health. So in this case, I would heal up three. So I get this, uh, this now white one, which is same on both sides. And then I get two extra hearts, like so. And that means I have three health left. And if I take fatal damage again, then I die and the game's over. Uh, the Most villains also get that too. Uh, so of course the villains that you don't actually fight, such as the birds and uh, the ghosts, uh, they don't, they do not actually get that. But the killers also get that. So you can end up in scenarios to where you know you deal the final blow to the killer, and everything is going. <clears throat> you're like, ah, oh, I'm gonna win this, and the killer just like all of a sudden, ah, heals or comes back up, comes back alive, and you have to fight him again. And it's like it's that's a cool. Like I love that mechanic. That mechanic is cool because it's nice and mysterious, and you know there, there's some cool things you can do with it. Like I. I don't know if I've seen that particular mechanic in other games. Maybe I have, but uh, it's kind of cool because it's random. Uh, if you want to know, know the statistics on getting one of those tokens, there's eight tokens total. Five are blank, and the last three have the numbers one, two, and three. So basically, there's a one in eight chance that you'll get health, and uh, the number, the amount of health that you get depends on which one you draw. So yeah, so that's pretty much the the things to talk about. I mean, there's not much to kind of uh, mention outside of uh, other pros. Uh, so let's go ahead and get into the cons because I have quite a bone to pick with Carnival of Blood and the balance of this game. So one of the primary issues of this game is that I think it has a scaling issue. As in, um, I think it has a, a and of course it's a one player game, so I don't mean scaling as a number of players, but it has a scaling issue as far as difficulty. So, um, on the one hand, like I said, you can mix and, mix and match your people. Uh, so fighting Hans on Camp Happy Trails for all intents and purposes is the easiest thing you can do in the world because Hans is very predictable towards the end and he's just going to keep following you and try to punch you and you can just follow him and try to punch him too. That's it. Whereas um, some of the other uh, enemies are a little more creative, like the ghost. There's no, you don't punch the ghost. You got to do your thing and get out. You got to achieve your objective and get out. Uh, Dr. Fright, you can only fight him in his nightmares, or sorry, in your dreams. So you have to go to sleep to fight him, but you got to make sure you have the right stuff to fight him. And it's like a cool little mini game going on. Um, but the scaling issue in here comes in to where with Hans, because you're fighting on Camp Happy Trails, these are the two. Hans is the easiest villain, and Camp Happy Trails is objectively the easiest location because it is skewed towards good um, by quite a bit. Um, to where there's events that can happen at the location to where you also have to deal with, um, or sorry, there's events that can happen that can give you boons or not boons, opposite of boons, perils. And um, each location is very different. Um, I don't know if I mentioned it before, but if I didn't, let me go back and clarify. Each location is very different. Um, I did show the locations, but I didn't talk about the details. So Creech Manor, for instance, is a house. So you're trying to go up and down stairs and fight things in the house. Sacred Groves is a location that has special uh, sacred grounds or burial grounds to where if there's victims at a certain point, if there's victims in that place when a certain event shows up, then bad things can happen. Uh, Camp Happy Trails is the little map you saw. And there's some cool stuff like there's a boat that can show up to so where you can like go across the boat. Uh, and uh, Carnival of Blood, there can be like a little cart like a little golf cart that shows up on the edge so you can drive the golf cart and you can use it to run into people so you can do some cool stuff with that so each location definitely have, has its own personality and that's fun and that means that when you play the game you're actually fighting not just the villain you're fighting also the location because the location sometimes helps you but most of the time will not help you so as, knowing that uh, there's some combinations that exist in this game that are just impossible so terror from above is one of the mini expansions you can have in this game I don't know if I talked about it yet, but Terra from Above is a mini expansion. It comes with a single final girl and it comes with uh, a single enemy and the enemy is birds. So the birds are not villains, they're not killers, they're instead minions. So that means that, uh, and, uh, they, and they spawn everywhere. So you start the game spawned everywhere and you have to kind of deal with the birds, not get overrun by the birds. There's a certain number of birds where if they sh too many birds show up then you just lose the game. Uh, so you're trying to manage the birds, you know, you got to smack a bird or two so you can keep the numbers down. It's basically like you're kind of playing a pseudo pandemic in this type of game. It's where you're trying to run through and achieve the objectives before time runs out. And uh, it's, it's pretty it's pretty cool because it kind of forces you to do things and keep moving and keep active. Um, but the nature of these ones is that the birds will spawn everywhere. They start everywhere. And uh, Carnival of Blood has a few items because they're tuned towards Geppetto. So if you remember, Geppetto is a villain who has three little minions. So some of the wording in this game, in this particular uh, location, is tuned towards <clears throat> uh, if a victim is in the same location as, a, as an enemy. So instead of saying killer, it'll say enemy. If a victim is in the same location as, as an enemy, then they die immediately. And that's a problem because all of the birds count as enemies and they're everywhere. And there's certain things in this uh, location that basically say uh, randomly move uh, vi uh, victims, ra randomly move the people you're trying to save, randomly move them around. 
and if they move into a spot with an enemy then they die immediately and the birds themselves uh kind of ramp up a little bit faster than normal so there's a uh, four levels of four levels of ramping if you will to where as you as more people die that increases the power of the villain and for the birds there's four levels of power at level five they're at their max and they just keep doing bad things so essentially i had a game where i literally recorded uh, i'm not going to post it because i had some audio issues but i can post it if you all want to see it for the purposes of seeing the thing i'm referring to to where essentially the birds um were everywhere uh, there was a combination at turn one to where victims were forced to run at a certain point. And then by turn two, new victims spawned in the location that forced them to run. And all those victims ran. It spawned four victims exactly. One of the victims being my uh, sister is, is a, a card called Did You Follow Me Here? And uh, that sister ran into a spot with an enemy and died immediately. And the drawback or the backlash for the sister card for that uh, did you follow me here that special victim was that the it, the um, bloodlust which is what the uh, ramping up for the villains is called the bloodlust goes up two levels if she dies and not only did she die but two other people died so three people died but the uh the bloodlust went up by four and that's turn two and i you know i had one turn to do something and at the end of turn well i had two turns to do something and then by turn the end of turn two i the birds are now at their strongest and I'm dealing with another event that shows up that says panic people again because for, for some other reason. So panic is that move people around randomly. Um, so I had two situations to where people were randomly moving into bird spots per round. And every single time you hit that max level, once you hit the max level in the birds, every single time it went up and there was another blood that was added, it just did another bad thing. And it kept doing bad things. And it just, <laughs> it became impossible. So that's all goes a very, 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 very long way to say that Carnival of Blood is not quite balanced as far as being skewed towards good. More specifically, it is very drastically skewed towards evil. So if we're talking like a, uh, in the terms of boons that you can get, the location has some events that are kind of somewhat neutral. It has a werewolf that can show up. Uh, sorry for the spoilers, but it has a werewolf that can show up and the werewolf kind of attacks anything that's in the space of. So I guess it's kind of a benefit. It has a golf cart that I talked about before that you can jump in and move around pretty easily with. So that's kind of fun. But everything else is basically, um, it will try to murder you. Uh, there's items. This one has a special item mechanic to where when you find certain items, they're called traps. And when you find those traps, you take damage and something bad happens. And there's... 12 items in the game every game that you play three of those 12 items are traps they're guaranteed traps so you're you, you're kind of discouraged from searching and if you're discouraged from searching the items really help you out as far as solving some of the problems that you have with movement or attacking or other things that you have for utility and you don't want to do that then there's also events that can show up in the villain deck to where the villain will or sorry the when that card shows up it basically spawns an acid trap for instance and the acid trap kills any victims oh sorry spawns in your spot kills any victims who are in your spot and also does damage to you so if you're trying to you know escape with two or three victims or sorry two victims and that acid trap spawns at the worst possible time it kills those victims increases the bloodlust of the enemy and then also does a whole bunch of other stuff so it's like there's a whole bunch of there's a whole bunch of skewed towards evil things that come up and I also now i'm thinking about it, i need to double check the wording on acid trap because i don't know if it triggers the bloodlust but i can double check um later on but the main thing is that it's a scaling issue and if you combine terror from above with carnival blood it is probably in my opinion the hardest the hardest thing you can do as far as this game like it's more hardcore than hardcore and i think uh, i don't think that the designers maybe intended for that to happen but it just tells me that there's a balance issue um, and in the forums, just to add a last point, in the forums this has been discussed, as in people have said, man, this game's hard, this game's difficult, and uh, I think the designers, or some of the designers, are people from, uh, from, oh, shoot, sorry, people from, uh, what was the name? Oh, geez, that's right, yeah, it's over here. People from Van Ryder Games, man, sorry, <laughs> people from Van Ryder Games responded, and they basically said, well, sometimes in a horror movie, it kind of ramps up and it becomes very difficult all of a sudden, so that's just part of the game. To which I, I understand the sentiment of what they're saying, but I also think that that doesn't excuse a balance issue, as in the game is not balanced. Like there's a broken, th there's a legitimately broken thing about your game, and the statement that you made was, well, that just happens. And it's like, all right, well, that just happens is a thing that happened to me with Hans on Camp Happy Trails, 
there was like I was pretty much winning for all intents and purposes, and there was a certain card that got played, and Hans just all of a sudden charged across the table or charged across the level and was in my face, and I couldn't get him off of me, and then I ultimately like you know. You know, I, I barely won that game, but that's that's a something just happens moment. You know, dice rolled or cards flipped, and all of a sudden the luck just wasn't in my favor. That's just something that just happens. Uh, but with Carnival of Blood, the fact that by turn two, and I have video proof of it, by turn two, I basically had lost the game. That's not a some sometimes thing bad things just happen. That's a no. That's not balanced. <laughs> like there's there's a lack of balance in your particular system. So that goes a long way to say uh, to kind of inject a few sharp words into saying that. If there was a little bit more balance into Carnival of Blood, it would be playable. But I'm at the point to where I, I legitimately just won't play Carnival of Blood. Um, does that mean I hate the game? Does that mean I won't play the game? No. Um, I'm, I'm going to keep Carnival of Blood in my collection because Geppetto is fun to play against every once in a while. And every once in a while, I'll revisit Carnival of Blood to see if I can achieve it. But I feel it's basically impossible with certain combinations. Specifically, birds, Carnival of Blood, basically impossible. Basically unplayable. And it breaks the entire game. And that's something I feel it should be addressed. Is like, you know, maybe if... You're playing with birds with Carnival of Blood, maybe modify the rules a little bit to where minions can give you some reprise or maybe just like remove some of the some of the more negative traps that exist or maybe alleviate some of the items that are bad instead of the um, item deck. I mean, of course, this is my own game and it's a solo game, so nothing's going to stop me from modifying myself. And I probably will because I do want to play Carnival of Blood because I like the concept. But that goes a long way to say that, um, yeah, this game has a, has a scaling issue. And with season two coming out, with five more five more episodes coming out, with five locations, five new killers, and uh, ten new final girls, that concerns me because now I'm worried if there's going to be a balance issue in season two. Like if we take a season two villain and bring them over into season one in Creech Manor, maybe they're now officially the most broken thing in the world. Who knows? <laughs> so so that's one of those like you know I'm, I'm kind of concerned. Uh, I hope. I hope that it's just me being a little bit paranoid and uh, I'll just house rule some things for Carnival of Blood because honestly, that's the thing I can solve by myself. Like, it's a solo game. Nobody else is watching. I can house rule whatever I want. Um, but I would like to see if maybe the designers can find an official solution to that because that would be great. That would be great. Um, the situation in Camp Happy Trails with Hans, so where Hans just barrels across and I can't get him off me and, you know, it's had to deal with it. Like, that's, a, that's one of those, like, ah, this is cool. It puts me in the game. Like, yeah, that's fine. And like, that's fun because, you know, I, I was kind of doing really well and all of a sudden the tables turned. I was like, oh, no. And heck, there was a situation to where I played um, Terror from Above in uh, Camp Happy Trails. So I was going against the birds and I was doing really, really, really well. Like I was doing obnoxiously good. And then I made two or three bad decisions for two or three rounds in a row. And all of a sudden I just lost the game. Uh, and that for me, that felt that, that was rewarding. Like, you know, yeah, I lost and yeah, it felt bad. But that was rewarding because it's like, all right, I know that if I had made better decisions in turn four and five, I would not be where I am now. Like, I caused my own problems. Like, yeah, a dice roll happens and it comes out bad. Yeah, there's situations to where the birds do or the birds did a thing because I was fighting the birds. They did a thing that was inconvenient. But that in, in itself still boils down to I made bad decisions in round four and five. Uh, if I made better decisions in four and five, yeah, the birds doing their, their terrible thing and the dice being not great would still suck. But at least I know that I made the best possible decision and I can still continue along and I would definitely not be have been in a perilous situation. But on the same token, Carnival of Blood plus the birds, like that's that's not a that's not a I made bad decision situation. That's one of those. No, the game just is broken. <laughs> like the game is legitimately actually broken. Birds, Carnival of Blood. Uh, if you want to know the exact scenario, um, I had a tear from above. Uh, Carnival of Blood. Turn one, there was a car called Clowns Everywhere, an event called Clowns Everywhere. And then turn two, uh, did you follow me here showed up. So clowns everywhere, just to explain, basically means that any villain or any victims that are in the big top, uh, they're going to run away. So they're going to panic at the end of the upkeep phase. And that's what clowns everywhere did. And then turn two, uh, did you follow me here was a card that showed up where basically it spawns four victims. It spawns four victims in the big top, which let me give us a visual because I keep mentioning the words as if you all know it. But I can literally show it. So, um... <laughs> Uh, did you follow me here spawns four people in the big top and then once those people are in the big top uh because of the other event that said run away people who are in the big top um they ran away and one of those victims that spawned in the big top is my sister as i said thematically earlier it's, it's like a cool little thematic like, did you follow me here oh how dare you follow me here and um the the backlash if my sister dies is that you raise the bloodlust by two so essentially there's four people who spawned here 
and they panicked. My sister was one that panicked away into a spot with an enemy, and the enemy was in every spot that nobody else was. So she panicked over here and died, so bloodlust increased by two for the birds, and then two other people ran away, and they also died. So that's bloodlust is at max. Uh, the birds for terror from above, they only have a bloodlust track of four. And that means that, uh, yeah, they were immediately at their birds. The birds were immediately at their most powerful. Um, also, just as another chain reaction thing, so let me zoom in here. Uh, there we go. Just as another chain reaction thing, this is the bloodless card for the birds. Uh, like I said, this is a one, two, three, four. So after four victims die, they're at their strongest. And another chain reaction thing is that when we pass this, we got a new event card, and that event card that came out was actually not great either. Uh, it was kind of annoying, but it just wasn't great. It became more difficult because these little masks here, those, those are called terror levels. And then dark power, the bird gets a special power now that I have to deal with. And uh, it just became perilous. Like it's just immediately perilous at turn two. So by turn, the start of turn three, I basically said, all right, okay, cool. I probably can't win this, but let me play it out because I'm recording. Cause I, like I said, I did record it. And then it was to the point where it's just like, yep, yeah, nope, I just died. I eventually died. Uh, to be fair, if, I, if I'm, cause I went back and reviewed the video, I did play this wrong. So whenever you increase the bloodlust again with the birds, and this will be, well, I guess I'll explain it now, just to give you an idea of how sometimes my own interpretations are the problem. Um, you get rid of one of the tarot cards from the birds and the birds have a tarot card deck of 10, all villains do. So essentially you start culling their deck and then if their final, if their finale is revealed, so if their, uh, if their final ultimate ability is revealed, then you start losing one health. Um, I started losing one health earlier, so I, I, I read it as lose one health when the uh, terror goes up again, or when the uh, bloodlust goes up again, which was incorrect interpretation. So that means that I might have been able to squeak out another two or three turns before I started dying. But at that point, it was pretty much too late. Like it was like, all right, and, you know, I felt kind of deflated, and I was like, all right, this is this is untenable, and I can't do this, and eh, I was moved on with life, and uh, I also died. So, <laughs> so yeah, so that's that's how that worked out. So. All that goes along when to say like that's a balance issue like that that's legitimately just a balance issue like if you if you can figure out a way to make that not as awful maybe change the wording to where if they move into the killer spot they die or if a victim moves into the killer space then the minions will kill stuff that can help change things a lot um, of course that would neuter that card completely for the birds because the birds have no killer but on the same token it makes it to where it's not impossible to play against the birds because literally just that one event shows up and then all of a sudden uh the game is unplayable so <laughs> so yeah all right uh the reason why i wanted to do these videos separate is because i did want to spend a little bit of time talking about that whole balance situation and also just kind of trying to sing my praises for the game because the modularity of everything and the the accessibility and like the fun like like i have a lot of fun when i play this game uh yes it's a dice game yes i gotta make decisions but i feel like my decisions matter uh, except for that one scenario I just mentioned, but I feel like my decisions matter. And that's definitely something I can't say about a, a lot of other games. Uh, so it's definitely, uh, definitely a big plus. I would highly recommend this game. Uh, if you do want to go check it out, then definitely do go check it out. If you just want the most bare minimum that you can get, I would highly recommend getting the starter box, uh, Camp Happy Trails and Terra from Above. Those three, I feel, are the best combination of things because Camp Happy Trails is not that problematic of a place. It kind of stays out of the way for the most part. Hans is fun to fight once or twice, but it gets kind of boring. And uh, Terra from Above is just just a, a very fun puzzle to deal with to the point where I'm like, you know, I'm still trying to figure out the best way to fight the birds. Uh, and then here's the here's two cards for... Let me bring this back out. If you were wondering what the example was, and, and like I said, I might, if, if you all want to see the video, I can bring out the video and post it, but I, I don't think I will because it had an audio issue that I, was kind of annoying. But those are the two events, uh, just in case you want to read them for yourselves. And based on the wording of things, it says enemy, and enemy counts uh, villains and also counts, um, also counts as uh, minions. So minions and villains are considered enemies, whereas if it said killer, then it would be only the killer. And just to give an example of the wording being very specific, uh, let me see if I can find one that says killer. Okay, I gotta use uh, Camp Happy Trails because I know that one has one. All right, and hopefully y'all get a nice decent read on that. Uh, but yeah, yeah, so so just just that combination of things was just, you know, kind of a bummer, kind of definitely, definitely like kind of mellowed out some of my excitement about the game initially because it's like oof i don't know if this kind of issue exists in multiple things i'm gonna keep playing the game and i'm gonna keep enjoying it but uh yikes that was a yikes oh here's one 
So this is one that I found out in my very unfortunate demise for Bear Trap. So with Bear Trap, it says, uh, spend two time, such and such, and then it highlights the word killer. So the word killer exists. And when it says killer, then it affects the, the main killer. So if Clowns Everywhere said if a victim runs into a space with a killer, that's different. Because, you know, the birds have no killer. And yes, it does kind of affect the birds. So maybe you have to make a special rule to where whenever there's three birds in a spot, which is what's considered the killer for birds, uh, then that counts as a killer. Uh, so, you, you know, you have to use a little bit of gymnastics with wording to try to make that work out. But the uh, final thing is just that, you know, that, that kind of thing, that's a balance issue. Like, that's legitimately just a balance issue. Uh, if that balance issue can be fixed and addressed, then, like, the game is all of a sudden back to his glory, glory uh, days. And I would like to see if the designers might, might, consider, might consider adding in some additional official rules to help out with that. Because uh, that, that was just one of those brutal... <laughs> those brutal situations where it's like, man, this is like, I just can't get any break here. All right, cool. All right, after that, this video went for 30 minutes. Okay, cool, so I'm gonna cut it there so I can go ahead and do the setup video for the scenario. The scenario that I will be doing in the setup will be Sacred Groves. Uh, so Sacred Groves, which is on this side. So I'll be doing Sacred Groves with Tear from Above. Ah, there we go. So I'll be doing the Sacred Groves location with Tear from Above versus the birds. And I'll choose my final girl once I get there. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. So that's it for the video. Hope you all enjoyed it. I hope it was informative. Definitely let me know how you feel about the game. And definitely let me know if you can think of any fixes to that particular issue that I talked about. And uh, I, yeah, hope you all have a good day. And uh, I'll see you all whenever.